Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. I want to ask everyone to stand to their feet. If you want to come down to the altar, you can. This is a time to go before God and just petition Him for the things that we've been asking for. We just want to go before the God with our, with our issues and our problems and lay it all at His feet because we serve a God that's able to do all things but fail in our lives. Right? And we can go to Mama, we can go to Daddy, we can go to our friends, but they fall short. But we serve a God that has never failed and has never lost a battle. Amen? So we want to give it all over to Him today. So Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you're close to your neighbor, grab your neighbor's hand. We're going to go before the God in prayer. Most great said, we follow Lord. We come before you just giving it all over to you today, Lord. But we know we can't do it all by ourselves, Lord. So we're glad that we have a, a relationship with a Father that has never left our side, Lord. We're glad we have this relationship with you, God, that you'll keep chasing after us even when we walk away, God. We're glad we have this relationship with you, Lord, that you will send your Son to die on our cross for us, Lord. We, we're glad that we have this relationship with you, God, so when we need something, we can go to you in prayer, Lord. You're able to give it to us, Lord. Lord, we're glad we have this relationship with you, Lord, that has never failed us yet, Lord. When men will walk away and turn their back on us, Lord, you chase after us and come get us, Lord. You, the Bible can say you leave the 99 and go get the one, God. So what a, what a God of love that we serve, Lord, that we can come before you even when we know we're in our best, Lord, even though when we haven't done right this week, Lord, we still can come to you, Father, and ask you to bless our lives, Lord. And you're able to do that thing for us because you see us, not that we see ourselves, Lord. You loved us before we first loved us, Lord. So that's enough to give you praise, honor, and glory this morning, God, because we serve such a faithful God, Lord, that, that provides us with grace on our lives, Lord, that we did not deserve this grace, God, but you give it to us over and over and over again, God. When I used up all my grace on yesterday, Lord, I woke up with brand new grace and mercy this morning, God, and you didn't hold it over my head when I did yesterday yesterday, God, because you started me right on my way this morning, God, with breath in my body, Lord, with the activity of my limbs, Lord, so I don't come into this place with no safe form fashion, but I come here to give you all the glory, honor, and praise that you deserve, God, because you didn't let something happen to me on yesterday, Lord, because you blocked that, 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 that attack of the enemy on yesterday, Lord, you blocked the attack of the enemy last week on my job, Lord, you blocked the attack of the enemy in my car, Lord, when somebody tried to hit me, Lord, because you're protecting me Lord, so I can do nothing but give you praise on that glory right now, Lord. Lift you higher than my situation, Lord. Even though I may not be feeling best in my body, Lord, I still give you praise, God. Even though my money may be funny, Lord, I still give you praise, God. Even though my relationship may be messed up, I give you praise, God, because you deserve all the praise, honor, and glory in this praise, Lord. I praise you to my last breath, God, because you deserve that, because you gave me the breath to be able to praise you, God. So I lift my hands to that, Lord, and praise you right now, Lord. I feel want to be filled up by you, Lord, but I have to give praise back out to you, Lord, for filling me up, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Right now, Lord, we just ask you, you bless every family represented in our church, Lord, from our pastor on down to all on down, Lord. We just ask you, you know the needs that are being needed in our house, Lord. You know whether it may be, be relationship problems, Lord, whatever it may be money issues, Lord. We ask you right now to be a healer to those relationships, Lord. We ask you right now to be a provider to those people that they need, Lord. We ask you to be a, 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 a way maker in the middle of nowhere, Lord. We ask you to be a trouble keeper. Lord, we ask you to be a bridge over troubled water, Lord. We ask you to be everything that we need in our lives, Lord, because you said, ask and we shall receive, Lord. So right now, Lord, before your great throne of grace, Lord, we ask you right now for those blessings on our lives, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to continue to bless our pastor and our first lady, Lord. Continue to bless their household a hundred times over, Lord. Whatever that may be lacking and need of, Lord, we ask you to bless them right now, Lord. We ask you to give them an overflowing blessing out of their lives, Lord, that that overflow may flow down, trickle down to the house, Lord. And we may feel that blessing upon their lives on our lives also, Lord. 
Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our church, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this season, Lord. We thank you for this season that you sent your son Jesus to be born in a manger, Lord. He wasn't born in a castle, Lord. He wasn't born, even though he was king, Lord, he was born in a manger. He humbled himself, come down, and, and be born, and come man, 100% man, 100% God, Lord, to die for our sins, Lord. So, right now, we're in this season, Lord, we want to put all the, the stress and worry of this season behind us, Lord. Even though maybe you know, individuals that are grieving at this time, Lord, we ask that they find comfort in you, God. Find comfort in what you was able to do for us, God, that we give you glory on our praise today, Lord. And Lord, we just want to seal this prayer with our praise and our lips, Lord. We just want to take the next 20 seconds and give you praise on that glory, God. You deserve more today, God, but that's the least we can do for you today, Lord. So we just say hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. We give you the highest praise in this place. Hallelujah, Lord.
And God, we just spend, just spend, spend 10, 15 seconds just thanking you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for our right mind. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our spouses. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our church family, God. Thank you, God, for keeping me. Even though I don't have all the money I need, God, you still make it kids me, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for still putting food on the table, God. God, still clothes on the back, God. Still a car to drive, God. Still gas in the tank, God. God, thank you. Still a job to go to, God. We say thank you, God. 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 Felt like giving up, but didn't give up. Thank you, God. Felt like quit, but didn't quit, God. Thank you. Thank you for loving me in spite of me. Thank you for loving me when I didn't love myself, God. Thank you for being faithful to me when I wasn't faithful to you. Thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you, God. And God, the, the, the song says you can never do another thing. You've already done enough. And God, so we praise you for what you've already done. Come on, somebody praise him for what he's already done. CD, 
I, I met Kyle and I, I, I was talking with Kyle and we were just talking about music and uh, looking at music on the TV and do, doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, I uh, ended up complaining about the church that I was at at the time. I was coming up at Mount Pearl Missionary Baptist Church. And I was complaining that we sang the same songs all the time. Uh, that we cut, we kept playing this song, this song, this song. I said, and all the songs are old. I said, I never get to change up a genre. I never get to play something different. We keep playing the same thing over and over again. It's been like this for years. And, and, and I thought he was going to uh, just try to encourage me, but he looked straight at me and said, have you taught a song? He said, can you teach a song? And I, and I was stunned. I was like, oh, well, you know what? I never tried to teach a song. I never tried to bring a new song. In other words, what Kyle was trying to get to me is that instead of complaining about the problem, do something about the problem. Yeah, because many times in the church, we mistaken problems. I wish the church would hear me today. Many times in the church, we've mistaken problems as a reason to leave or a reason to give up or a reason to get frustrated when sometimes problems, many times problems are opportunities in disguise. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Maybe, maybe the reason why something isn't fulfilled, maybe the reason something isn't getting done in church, maybe the reason that there is a problem in the church is because people that are supposed to step up into those places are sitting back in the pews. Amen. Amen. I'm not gonna get no amen on today. It's not really one of those messages. I, I ain't gonna try to kill y'all today. Praise the Lord. Amen. I can't come to beat you up. I come to get you up. But there are kingdom opportunities awaiting us. Amen. In the text, when there was a problem with the uh, Grecian Jews and the Hebraic Jews, it actually presented a kingdom opportunity that it created a place for seven men to be called to begin to do ministry. Uh, the apostles looked out for these seven men. Most of the time when we look at this text, we look at it as the first disciples. Excuse me, the first deacons. And that's exactly what they were. They were the first deacons to ever serve the church. He doesn't call them deacons in this text, but we see by the, the work that they picked up and the words in the Greek that actually caused their service, diakonos, which is where we get the with the, the English word deacon, amen, that they were doing this type of service. They were deacons, and they were chosen men to step up into these places where there have been problems, where, where people have been overlooked. It created a problem because uh, the Grecian Jews were upset. They were like, we're getting overlooked. They're showing some favoritism. It was because the apostles had been trying to do more than one job. The apostles had been trying to do two jobs, and they needed to split and create an opportunity for somebody else to serve. Right. Amen. Amen. And so where we see problems, we also see kingdom opportunities. Amen. The disciples said, look out among you and find seven men. And on today, I wonder, can I get seven men? Yes, I, I'm calling for seven men, and I know that sounds patriarchal, and I know that sounds uh, maybe uh, sexist, if you will, but I think there's something to say about seven men stepping up. Amen. I, I believe women can serve, and I'm going to get to that, but I also believe that men should be in this place serving. Amen. Amen. So, 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 because the Bible, the Bible, when it talks about the church, it talks about the church and describes it as a bride. Yeah, we, the church is the bride of Christ. The Bible also talks about the church as being a body. That's another illustration of the church. It's the body of Christ. And I'm a leg and you're a head and we all need each other. I can't say to the foot that I have no need of it. We are the body of Christ. But the Bible also describes the church as a family. Amen. Amen. And the, and the family needs a mother, a father, and some children, a husband, and a wife. Amen. And if we're going to do anything in the church to be representative of the church as a whole, there needs to be a display of family in the church. And if there's going to be authentic family, if there's going to be biblical family, we need to have men that will stand up and lead their families in worship. Amen. There is there is a need for men to stand up, and I and I'm praying that God would activate some men today in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
that's, that's what I'm praying in the Holy Ghost today. You came here and thought you were just going to sit here and you were going to worship. Amen. But I believe the Holy Spirit is going to activate some people that have been sitting back on today. As a matter of fact, I told you I wasn't just going to talk about some men, but I wanted to talk about some women. Can I get seven women that will stand up? Amen. Can I get seven women that will be activated in the Holy Spirit to begin to solve some problems? Uh, hush up your complaining. Amen. Preach Pastor Jason. I'm doing the best I can. Hush up your complaining and get busy. Amen. 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 If you see a problem in the church, if you see something lacking, amen, maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. It's not, it's not, it's not God telling you to leave. That's the devil. Let me get it straight. It's not God telling you to leave. That's the devil. Amen. But it's the Holy Spirit trying to prick you and tell you, get up and do something about it. Yeah. I need seven men that will stand up. I need seven women that will stand up that I believe that the reason why you are here today you are listening to this message because God is calling you. Amen. God is calling you. Amen. God is calling you. Push your name and say God is calling you. Yes, God is calling you. Where are you serving? What are you doing? Amen. Where, where are you serving? What are you doing? God is calling you. Amen. Listen, God is calling you out and, 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 and God, God wants to use you. Amen. There's a place and there's problems that are presented that we just don't even know that are going to be there. They're, they're, they're going to come up. Amen. This week, I feel sick. I'm playing hurt on today. I really wanted to call one of these ministers this week and say, hey, I need you to go up there and preach because I'm not feeling the best. I'm trying to get my energy back. I got a cold or whatever's trying to get me. I'm playing hurt, but uh, uh, there's going to create, there's going to be opportunities just like that. Amen. There's going to be opportunities that we weren't looking forward to that we didn't plan for that we're going to need people to step up. Amen. 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 What happens? What happens when there's problems in the church? It creates kingdom opportunities for people to serve. Amen. 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 Uh, did you know I get to serve? Amen. 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 I, I, get, I get to serve. Amen. I get to serve. I get to serve. It's a privilege to serve. Yes. Amen. It's an honor to serve. Yes. Amen. That that even though I have to get up here and I'm sick, I'm not mad about it. Amen. Amen. I'm not mad about it. It's a privilege that I get to get up here and I get to preach the word of God. I get to serve. I get to do whatever I have to do, even if it caused me detriment, even if it caused me to hurt, even if it causes me to sacrifice. It's worth it because it's a privilege to stand here and preach to you. Amen. 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 To everybody that's, that's serving at Unfell in Love Christian Church, God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> But I wish you would shout back at me that I get to serve. I get to serve. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate everybody that served. I was just tripping on this week that uh, I, I was trying to delegate some things back out, and I was so, I don't even know who did it, but I'm, I'm so thankful. Uh, I'm, 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 I, want, I want our church to get like that, that I don't even know who did it, but they did it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, that this past week, there was some men that came out and they cleaned up. Uh, this room that's next door so that we could get, bring in some Christmas toys and Christmas items. Amen. God bless you. I don't even know who did it, but God bless you. Amen. The men will step up and did that. Amen. And then there's going to be some more opportunities even after this service that they're going to be bringing in Christmas donations. So I just pray that everybody will stay around, especially the men to help us get those things in. And I appreciate everybody that served, but uh, you shouldn't need my appreciation. Amen. Amen. You should be doing it because it's a privilege and an honor that God will call you out to use you to do something for him. Amen. Yeah. Problems create kingdom opportunities. Amen. Problems create kingdom opportunities. Listen, uh, we, 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 we get to serve. We should be trying our best to be servant leaders. We should try, be trying our best to serve in every place we can. I'm going to give you these three things. Amen. That, 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 that you should be doing to solve some of the problems in the church. Amen. Amen. Right. Uh, that, that you should be stepping up to serve. Amen. 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 That you should be stepping up to serve. Amen. 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 Who am I talking to? Everybody that's not serving. Amen. I love you. Amen. Amen. I love you. I really do. But you're, if you're not serving, you're not doing what God called you to do. Amen. 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 When everything else becomes, becomes before serving, you're not doing what God calls you to do. 
when everything else is more important than what's serving in the church, you're not doing what God called you to do. I love you, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I'm trying to position you where God is. Amen. I wish somebody would receive that. I'm, I'm trying to position you where God is. You're, 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 trying, you're frustrated about why things ain't working out in your life. You're frustrated about how, why things are going haywire. You're frustrated about how, why you feel so distant, why you don't feel close to God, why you don't feel connected. It might be where your position is. All right. That you're not positioned where he wants you to be, and that's in the midst of his will. Amen. Amen. That he called each and every one of us out to serve. Amen. 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 Can I get somebody to just thankful? That there was a time when you weren't doing nothing for the Lord. Amen. 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 That's what that's that's people heard. It's like, man, there was a time I wasn't doing nothing for the Lord. And then now I find myself serving again. And it feels so good to, yeah. to know that I'm serving the Lord. I'm just trying to get a witness in here to serve somebody else. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm not trying to beat you up, but if we continue to make excuses about why we are not serving, we will end up getting in front of God and we won't have nothing to show him. He's been too good to me. He's been too good to me for me to sit back and do nothing. For me not to want to serve. For me not to want to do anything he asks me. Amen. I, I don't know what crowd I'm talking to on today, but I just thought there might be a few people that would witness and testify that God has really been good to you. No, no, for real, for real. I mean, he's been real good to you. I mean, he's been better to you than you've been to yourself. Amen. Amen. When, he, when, when I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. He's been that good to me. He's been good to me right now. I wish I had a witness. He's been good to me right now. Woo! Don't let the witness start thinking about the stuff I don't deserve. Amen. I wish I had a witness in here. That's a, the stuff I don't deserve, that he still loves me and keeps me and takes care of me. There for me. When I'm not even doing what he asked me to do, he's still faithful to me. He's that good. He's that good. He's that good that, that I, I, I got to do something. I got I to gotta serve. It's a privilege for me to serve. If, if I have to come and vacuum the carpets, God, I, I'll vacuum the carpets. So that'll be my praise to you. If I have to come in and move stuff around and clean up and set up chairs and open doors and whatever I have to do. Whatever I have to do, I'm willing to do it. To do it. Have to sing on the praise team and be here every Friday. Amen. Learn the songs. Amen. God bless you, praise team. I'll do, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Because you've been good to me. I want somebody else to know you've been good to me. Anybody want somebody else to know how good? You know, when, when something is real good. Come on, Sarah. Come on, Pastor Jackson. Anybody else like me? When something is real good, you're looking for somebody to tell. That new Netflix show, you try to tell, hey, this show is, you gotta get on Facebook and tell somebody that it's that good. But I wonder, has God been good enough to make me wanna jump on social media and say, hey, he's been, he's been good. In order, in order to be that servant leader that God is calling us to be, first point one, you must have a good reputation. Amen. You must have a good reputation. Did you see in the text? The apostle said, choose one of these that has a good report, that has a good reputation. Yeah. Amen. And this is so countercultural to us because we believe that what God has called us to, can't nobody say nothing about what God called me to do. That it's not about what people say that I get to do whatever I want to do and God has anointed me. Listen, if you're trying to do something for God, 
Haters are going to hate. Haters are going to hate. But I'm not talking about haters. Amen. Hey, you can could, you could have a, a, a pristine track record, but haters are going to hate. I'm not talking about haters. Amen. That we have to have a good reputation amongst the people. We have to have such a good reputation that people would choose us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So people do have something to say about where you serve. Amen. Amen. How, how, does, how does one have a good reputation? It really depends on the next two attributes that I'm about to preach. I'm just preaching the text. It said choose somebody that has good reputation. What did it say? Y'all read the text? Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. That's my sermon. Happens to be good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. That's what the Bible says, right? But in order to have a good reputation, you really got to have the other two attributes. <laughs> because it's the other two attributes that informs this first attribute. That the reason why I have a good reputation is because I'm full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Amen. Amen. I wish I had a witness in here. <laughs> Amen. That the reputation is representative of how full I am with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And how much wisdom I have. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Yet, yet, good reputation is not just having those things. Amen. Good reputation is not just have, being full of the Holy Spirit. Because, because, because we can mistake in what that means. Because you might shout on Sunday. Amen. And, and cussing in the parking lot Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Amen. You might speak in tongues of angels in the sanctuary. And speak in tongues of devils at home. Amen. And so, and so it, it's not just what somebody looks like at a moment. Amen. Because I could fool you today. Amen. Amen. To our guests on today that might have seen me for the first time, I could fool you on today. You might think I'm full of the Holy Spirit. But that's because maybe, I'm not talking about myself. I try to take a sister. But maybe I'm not doing the same thing during the week. What I'm trying to tell you is that being full of the Holy Spirit and, and walking in wisdom takes consistency. Yeah. So people have to see your consistent behavior before you can be moved into ministry position. Before you can have the privilege to serve. I'm going to say it again. People have to see your consistency. Amen. That you can't be uh, praising God all on social media. Amen. On Sunday and then on Friday you turn and you cussing. That's not a good reputation. And, and truth be told, before there was a social media, amen, there were people that was praising on Sunday, slipping, dipping, and tripping during the week, and then praising again on Sunday again. That's been since the this beginning of time. But the problem now is we have social media that just highlights what a hypocrite you are. Y'all said I did say it. Why, why, why would you display your hypocrisy? <laughs> Say a good reputation. Are you the same? Listen, listen. Do do you want to be two faced? This is really not. It's really not about. It's probably really not about being saved or not. I just wouldn't want to be two-faced. I just wouldn't want to be a hypocrite. Somebody said in their spirit, well, God's still working on me. You need to do some work, too. Because if you say God's still working on me and you ain't changed over 20 years, what you're really saying is God can't do it. Ooh. What you're really saying is God is not able. The devil is alive. Ooh. Stop putting it on God and put it on you. Do you have a good reputation? For real, for real, for real. All, all, all the preaching stuff and all that is. I'm. For real. Amen. 
this, this is, you, you, you just answer this in your heart, in your mind. Do you have a good reputation? Amen. Would the people of God look at you and say, hey, that, that, that person is consistent, full of the Holy Spirit every time I see him. Make wise decisions every time I see him. Do you have a good reputation? See, your, 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 your reputation does determine the level that you serve. Come here, tell me. Your reputation does determine the level that you serve. And, and some people don't like that because we say the church is judging me because of my past. It's been one week, man. <laughs> now, you know what? That's what we say when it's us, too. Amen. 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 When, when, we, when we fail, Amen. the church needs to get over what I did. But if it's somebody else, we hold them accountable. If God has called you, mm -hmm. he has called you to win people you are called to serve. Uh -huh. yeah. If God has called you, he has called you to win people that you are called to serve. Uh -huh. I hope y'all catching this. See, I can't preach to y'all uh -huh. if I don't have your heart. If y'all think I'm a whoremonger, it's hard for you to listen to me. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Yeah. And I'm trying to get you the word of God, which is a service. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm serving the word of God. Amen. I can't serve you effectively if I have not won you. Come on, sir. In other words, I have to be consistent in my life to be able to preach this word. You have to be consistent in your life to be able to sing on this praise team. You have to be consistent in your, in your life in order to serve on the instruments. Now I said, I, I just said, I just said, I just said that your level of your reputation uh -huh. determines uh -huh. where the level that you serve. But that doesn't mean you cannot serve. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. I said the level at which you serve. Mm -hmm. Amen. If 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 you just got saved and you got an issue with cussing, I mean, you cuss like a sailor. I mean, you cuss like a It's probably not a good idea for us to give you a microphone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that's a place where you can serve. Get in where you fit in. Amen. church discipline on this because when we talk about good reputation, it makes me think about uh, because we're not perfect, I can fall, people fall, right. but but when we fall, it's our responsibility Amen. for those people that we've lost trust with. Amen. We do have to win them back. Amen. 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 We don't Amen. like that because we want to call them hate and yeah. say that they judge and I, no, Amen. no, we're supposed to have a good reputation. Because it's hard to serve somebody, amen, when you don't have a good reputation. So the other day, the other day, we went, me and the kids, Robert had some money, and he said, Dad, I want to go get the Popeye sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right. He bugged me about it all day. Kyla had some money, too. He said, Dad, I don't want no Popeye's. I want some chicken filet. I say, man, y'all gonna have to choose. And they ended up twisting my arm, and I said, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna take y'all to vote, okay? It was at night. It was at like, it was it was nine, nine after 9.30. And so I know Chicken Filet closed at 10. And I think Popeye's was closing at 10 as well. And so I said, I said, well, we probably gonna go to Chicken Filet first, because at least I know they probably get us out in time to get to Popeye's. So we went to Chick-fil-A, and Chick-fil-A did their thing, right? They had the food ready, hot and fresh, got us through the line, we're on our way to Popeye's, and I'm like, 
all man Robert, <coughs> excuse me, I was thinking of making Popeyes because the time was running out. Come find out Popeyes didn't close to 11, so he was gone. So we finally get up to the speaker at Popeyes, and they tell us, uh, I said, I want your spicy chicken sandwich. We don't have a spicy chicken sandwich. This is two weeks ago. We don't have a spicy chicken sandwich. We have the regular chicken sandwich. I was like, okay, Robert, is, is that the one you wanted? He said, no, nah, I really was coming to taste the spicy one. And do you want this one anyway? He said, yeah, I'll just get the regular one. And so uh, he wants the, the regular combo. He wants the combo um, with the fries and the drink. And I told him what I told him what he wanted, and he said he told me the price over the speaker. And I said, I said, wait a minute, you didn't ask me what type of drink I want. He said, that's because we're out of sodas. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm like, so, but the reason why I would choose to go to Chicken Filet before I go to Popeyes is because I know the Chicken Filet is consistent. That I know I'm going to get good service. Yes, yes. That at Popeye's, I don't, the only time, it's one time I had good service in Popeye's, and that was when I was in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> down south, because they treat people a little bit different down south. Amen. But you, you choose Chicken Filet. Mm -hmm. Amen. On your lunchtime, you're not going to go to Popeye's. If you have an option to go to Chicken Fil A, because you know you're going to get consistent service. Amen. Amen. That's what God has called us to. Amen. He's called us to consistency. He's called us to consistent service. In order to be a servant leader, you must be. What's the second one? Y'all, you already know my sermon. The second point is full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have to have a good reputation. It's there in the scripture, right? And you have to be full of the Holy Spirit. Are you full of the Holy Spirit? What does that mean, Pastor Jay said, full from head to toe? That the Holy Spirit is in your baby toe and the Holy Spirit is in every hair follicle on your head. That's, that's not what it means. What it means is if you're full of the Holy Spirit, it means to be under the Spirit's control. Paul, y'all heard me say this before, Paul gives us the, the perfect example by, by saying, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're drunk with wine, you're under the control of that alcohol. Amen? Amen. 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 You, you're under the control of the alcohol. If somebody was to pull you over and tell you to walk the line, the police tell you to walk the line, if you're full of the alcohol, you're not going to be able to walk a straight line because you're under the influence, you're under the control of the alcohol. And by comparison, if you are full of the Holy Spirit, amen, he gives you the power to walk a straight line because you're under his control. Amen. So are you full of the Holy Spirit? Or are you under the control of the Holy Spirit? Amen. If you're going to serve, you need to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So you won't be doing it for a selfish gain. Come on, sir. So you won't be doing it because of something that you want to gain out of it. Amen. But you're doing it for the Lord. Amen. So, so how do you know whether or not you're under the control of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Uh, look, look at this scripture. Ephesians 4.26. Because if we, if we really think about this, there are areas in our life where the devil tries to get in. Amen. <coughs> and what the devil wants to do is pull you away from the control of the Holy Spirit and pull you up under the influence of your flesh. Amen. And when you're up under the influence of your flesh, Amen. The devil can influence your flesh. Yeah. Amen. Just see how it happens. I'm trying to show you something. When you're up under the influence of your flesh, you might not even sin yet. <laughs> come on, sir. So, so, you know, the devil is not trying to come at you with two horns in a red suit and a tail. That would, that would be beneficial because if he came to you like that, you'd say, that's the devil. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
But the devil is trying to come at you slick. And so he's going to try to get you from up under the control of the Holy Spirit and put you up under the control of your flesh. Yeah. And when you're up under the control of your flesh, you won't necessarily sin at first. Right. This is why the scripture says, if you're, if you're angry, do not sin. Did y'all hear it just said? Yeah. Your flesh probably is the, is the place where you're angry. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It, does anybody often get angry in their spirit? <laughs> y'all so, y'all so holy ghost feel. Amen. I'm angry in my spirit. My, my spirit is bad. You've been in church all your life. My, my spirit, my spirit is bad. Amen. A lot of times I'm angry. It's in my flesh. Amen. Amen. I wish I, I, wish I had with us. Amen. Amen. But just because I'm angry in my flesh does not necessarily mean that I'm in sin. Amen. 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 Be angry with sin not. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Amen. See, I can still be in my flesh and I can be angry but yet not in sin. But if I allow that thing to linger, Amen. Amen. I allow that thing to linger, I'm no longer resting in the Holy Spirit. I'm no longer up under the control of the Holy Spirit, but I'm up under the control of my flesh. Look at that next verse. It says, and do not give the devil a foothold. I love that. I love that illustrative language. Because when we get angry, what's, what, what we want to do when we get angry? We get angry, we want to do something. <laughs> Amen. We, we want to do something. Amen. We want to do something to somebody, say something to somebody, do something to their property, bust windows out their car. <laughs> That ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. I know that ain't nothing. Of that. God bless you. What you say for that? Amen. What you say? What you say? Push your neighbor and say, I'm too saved for that. Amen. <laughs> Do not give the devil a foothold. There's an old saying if you let the devil ride, he'll want to drive. Amen. Amen. In other words, if we stay in our flesh too long, Man, this is a word for somebody. Amen. Because, because you had a week this past week, and you was frustrated this past week, and you stayed in that frustration, and, and you stayed in your flesh. You didn't try to get out and worship. You didn't try to read your word. You, you prayed, but it was only a little bit. Amen. You just stayed in your flesh. You know, when we stay in our flesh, the devil is just trying to get a foothold. Yeah, when he gets that foothold, he can grab you now. He got you. Think about this illustration. If he hides your foot, he hides where you're going. Amen. 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 I'm preaching better than you responded right there. Amen. I said, when you get the devil a foothold, he got the way you're walking. Amen. A good man steps are ordered by the Lord. But when I'm in the flesh and I allow the devil to get a foothold, amen, my steps are no longer ordered. Pastor Jason. Amen. My steps are no longer ordered by the Lord, and we're no longer controlled by the Holy Spirit, but we're controlled by the devil. Amen. Push your neighbor and say, what you mad at? <laughs> some, some stuff we, we, we got to let go. We got to let, we got to let it go because we're leaving too much room for the enemy. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Too much fleshly stuff. Watch me here, y'all. Too much fleshly stuff. What, what you're watching on TV. What you're listening to on the radio. Too much fleshly stuff. Now, I'm not going to say I'm not gonna say secular music is a sin, but if I'm listening to that more than I listen to gospel, Christian, worship, I feed my spirit with that all the time. See, See, I don't think y'all know how critical it is. So I'll let the scripture say it. Galatians 5, 16. It says, so I say, live by the spirit and you will not gratify uh, the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. Amen. And the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other. Amen. You got a war that's going on on the inside of you. 
If y'all believe that, amen. If y'all believe the scripture for real, you got a war that's going on on the inside of you. That 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 the flesh wants to take over. Never, never stops Come on, wanting to take over. I wish I had. <laughs> Real talk. Real talk. Flesh don't stop. And as soon as you stop praying, as soon as you stop worshiping, as soon as you stop coming to church, as soon as you stop getting your word, flesh is right there. Come on, just, 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 just dive into this whole fucking ice cream. See, 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 see. It's not, it's not, it's not always, it's not always the drugs that, 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 and the, and the sex and, and the drinking and all this other stuff that, 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 that the devil try to get you with. He'll try to get you with a bucket of ice cream or some, some cupcakes. And you know you shouldn't have it. Because you've been praying God to heal you for some diabetes and that high blood pressure, but uh, all you can. And we play it and we laugh, but the devil is trying to kill you. The devil trying to get him like you. He hates you. He's trying to kill you. Go ahead and eat all that salt. Go ahead and eat all that sugar. You know you want some more. Have somebody ring your doorbell with a whole cake. We're, we're in a war. We're in a war. We're in a war. Men, 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 we're in a war. A lot of our war is different from these ladies because, because, because we're ruled by our eyes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. We're, we're ruled by our eyes more so than women. Sometimes, this is a general statement, sometimes women are controlled by their eyes, but for as a general thing, we we like what we see. Come on, sir. Amen. 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 And, 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 and if we see him too much, <laughs> if we look him too much, yes, the devil gets in and gets that foothold. And he starts to guide your steps. Man, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. He'll, he'll start to guide your steps in some areas where you're not trying to go. But because you have not set your eyes on it, Amen. Amen. So our eyes, I'm here to come at you women too, that, that men, we have to watch what we look at. Come here, men. We got to watch what we look at. Amen. I know you're grown. I know you're a man. Amen. I, I, I know you can watch whatever you want to watch. But I want you to be honest and say you're weak. Amen. The Bible says the flesh is weak. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Is that, that what I see, I, some stuff I just can't look at. Stuff I just can't look at. Amen. Stuff I just can't look at. And come here, ladies. There's some things you just can't listen to. Because as much as much as men are guided by our eyes, women are guided by their ears. Amen. Amen. Married women, beware when somebody is giving you those compliments that your husband not giving you. Come on, man. You preach it, brother. Yeah. Because as soon as he didn't watch your hair, didn't, didn't say nothing about your new hairdo, dude at work would be like, ooh, you cute. <laughs> you like, <"Ooh>, you <laughs> why, did, why, <laughs> why did because you start to indulge in that stuff? And real talk, it feel good. Y'all not talking back to me, lady. It, it feel good to be recognized when somebody was supposed to recognize you didn't recognize you. Now somebody else is recognizing you. It feel good. But watch the devil. The devil is alive. Because then you go back home mad. <laughs> you didn't even say nothing. No good. We're in a war. We're in a war, and the devil is not just pulling out big guns that we can see. Right, sir. He's trying to get in and get a foothold. 
Lift, lift your hand if you, if you think you can't sing. For real, just talk to me. You can't sing. Praise the Lord, you can't sing. But do you sing? <laughs> do you sing? You sing. You sing anyway. Amen. 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 Sing. Amen. It makes a difference. Y'all, y'all, y'all think this is silly, but this is a scripture that says that we sing and make melody in our heart. It keeps us joyful. It keeps us under the control of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You can sing everything else. Oh my. Oh my. Amen. You can sing everything else. Amen. You need to get your repertoire. Listen, you might not like what we sing. Find something that you like. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Find something you like to glorify God. You sing that. Amen. Amen. I, I praise the Lord. I see Christy wave her hand. She says she can't sing. But she loves some commission. I bet, I bet you she knows all the words and be singing it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Cause, cause, because it helps you sometimes. Amen. Commission got some good songs that help you when you're going through. Amen. Amen. You got to find something that you like. Amen. That'll help you through a hard place. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. You got you to be joyful. I got to hurry up. You got to be thankful. Y'all talk back to me so I can speed up, okay? <laughs> Uh, Ephesians 20, Ephesians 20, 5, 20, it says, always giving thanks. Be thankful. Right. How do you stay filled with the Holy Spirit? Be thankful. Yeah. Thankful for everything. Amen. Oh, Anybody thankful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, do a, let's do a little test to see if it works. Let's, let's test out the scripture. Think of some things you're thankful for.
You have to become a consumer of knowledge. If wisdom is knowledge applied, you have to become a consumer of knowledge. How much knowledge are you consuming? Are you watching a bunch of dumb stuff? You you watch you watching them Real Housewives? I just got a real problem with it. Amen. It, 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 it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because I feel like if you already prone to drama and conflict, amen, that you don't need to put more drama and conflict in your spirit. Sometimes I think watching those shows, you just be trying to find ammo of things to say and do that's even more ratchet. Who knows this? Who go check me, boo? <laughs> Y'all watch that and say, woo, put that one in my pocket. <laughs> want to be wise and fill your life with foolishness. In, in the music that we listen to and the things that we watch on TV, we cannot want to be wise and fill our lives with foolishness. Some of y'all, real talk, need to just stop in the middle of my message and delete a whole bunch of people from our social media. I love you, but I don't have to be friends with you on Facebook. Because every time I go past you, you're doing something foolish. Amen. Here, last few things, and I'm going to stop on how to get wisdom. How many want wisdom? Amen. Just five, six, seven people, eight people. Want wisdom. I'm going to talk to y'all for the next few minutes. Amen. 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 All the people that want foolishness, just, just scroll on Facebook. Amen. <laughs> First Kings. First Kings 3 and 5. Amen. And here's what I want to get to you. That God honors your desire for wisdom. Amen. 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 God honors your desire for wisdom. You got to be full of wisdom. If you want to serve in God's church, uh -huh. if you want to do what God has called you to do, you got to go after wisdom. Said So this is the story of King Solomon. Amen. His daddy was David. He was a great king. And the Lord sent an angel uh -huh. to speak to Solomon uh -huh. when he became king. And this is where we are. It says, said, at at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? Uh -huh. What shall I what, what, Man, wouldn't that be amazing if God came and said, What shall I give you? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Woo what would you ask for? Amen. Yeah. And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David. Uh, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you, you have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is to this day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Th the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked for this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself 
nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your word. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. Solomon becomes the wisest man to ever live. Nobody like him before him, nobody like him after him. He becomes the wisest man to ever live because when God asked him what he wanted, he said, I want wisdom. How bad do you want wisdom? Do you see God's heart here? That if you would go after wisdom, he would bless you? And listen, there's something when you look at the heart and the mind of God. Why wouldn't I bless you with riches if you wanted wisdom? I, I, I don't mind giving you riches. I don't mind giving you long life now because you got wisdom now. Amen. Did y'all hear the preaching coming around the corner? Here it comes. Maybe the reason why God has been blessed us with wealth. Come on, sir. Amen. It's because we're going after too much foolishness. Why am I going to give you this money when what you want to hang with is this foolish crowd? Who, who teach birds and feather flock together. And you think you're not influenced. But if we go after wisdom, ooh, man, who have you asked to be in your life that is wise? Who are you seeking? I told y'all this last week. For us to have focus, we need help. That we need a Barnabas, we need a Paul, we need a Timothy. Who are you pouring into? Paul? Paul poured into Timothy. Who do you have around you that's your peer that encourages you? Barnabas? Timothy, who do you have poured in you that can see a little bit further than you, that's a little older than you, but still can relate to you? Right. Amen. 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 Well, what wisdom are you after? If you take right now, if you take inventory of the people around you, what wisdom are you gleaning from them? Or what foolishness are you gleaning from them? Well, mm -hmm. James 1 and 5. This is good news again. Not only does God honor your desire for wisdom, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. Right. Anybody lack wisdom? He should ask God. Amen. Who want wisdom? For real. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, for real. You want, you want more wisdom. If you think you're already wise, you don't. <laughs> he, did you see this text? He gives it generously. Amen. He gives it generously. He gives it generously. He gives it generously. And listen, he won't find any fault. In other words, the dumb stuff that you've done before. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you ain't, you ain't done that dumb stuff. The dumb stuff, dumb stuff that I've done before, he, he don't hold it against you. The, fo the foolish stuff I did before, he won't hold it against me. Amen. But he'll give me wisdom generously. Yes. Ooh, that's why That's why when somebody can get saved, they can get the wisdom of God and all that dumb stuff they need to do, it can be a total turnaround and now they're wise. Now they're telling you how to live. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I ain't got nobody in here that used to do some dumb stuff, but now you be encouraging people to do the right thing. You used to do the wrong thing all the time. Oh, I used to do this stupid stuff. Don't do what I did. But we have to put in some work. Amen? Amen. We got to put in some work. We got to ask God. He don't mind giving it, but you got to ask for it. You have not because you ask not. That's in James as well. Amen? You have to ask for it. 
Not only that, but but you got to stay, keep your mind around things that's that's transforming. Amen. Amen. Romans twelve two. Do not be conformed to this world, to the pattern of this world, but be what? Transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. How do I know the will of God? I got to get my mind in his word. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's where wisdom comes from. Yeah. Wisdom comes from his word. I'm finished. Amen. There's kingdom opportunity that's before you. Amen. Amen. Not just in the church. But if you look around you, what's burdening you? What burdens you? Is it young ladies that seem like they have no guidance? What what burdens you? Is it young men that have no fathers? What burdens you? Is it homeless people? What burdens you? This is a kingdom opportunity. Let me get everybody's attention. I'm trying to grab you here. Whatever, whatever problems you've been seeing that burdens your heart, this is what God is calling you to. It's a kingdom opportunity for you to be able to serve. Amen. God wants to God wants to use you. Touch your neighbor and say, God wants to use you. And it's a privilege to be used. It's a privilege to serve. And God is calling all of us to this place of service. Calling all of us to this place of service. Calling all of us to this place of service. Somebody said, I'm not ready yet, God. The devil is alive. There's a place you can serve right now. The Bible says in Philippians 2.12, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your salvation. You got to put some work into it. God is calling you. God is calling you. God is calling you. Somebody said I'm too busy. Everybody did. God is calling you to step out of, from where you are and be about his business. Work out your salvation. Listen. For it's God. Text goes on to say, for it is God who works in you, both to will, put it on the screen for me, and to do for his good pleasure. For it's God who works in you, both to will, and to do for his good pleasure. In other words, even though I'm working out my salvation, even though I'm serving and doing everything I can, getting his word in me and everything I can, I only do it because God has put it in me. I can only work out what he put in me. I can only work out what he put in you. He that be done a good work in you shall perform it. He that began a good work in you shall perform it. If I'm, if I'm talking to you today and you know you need to be serving, you know it's a place that you need to step out to. See, I just believe that, that this word, even though I believe this for everybody, I believe this specifically for somebody, mm -hmm. that when you came to church today, this wasn't the first time that this has been on your mind. That God has already placed it on your mind, and you know that you need to be serving. You know that you need to step out and do what God has called you to do. If that's you today, stand up for me. Stand up. If that's you today, this word is for you, and you know you need to step out and do it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Listen.
at this particular text encouraging me. Because the only reason why you stood up is because he's already been working it in. The reason why you want to do is because he's been working it in you. I thank God because I can't take no credit for what I'm doing right now. I'm preaching. But he put that desire in me. He put that desire in me. Because he could have used anybody else. But he wanted to use you, Ross. He wanted to use you, Miss Ross. He wanted to use you, Miss Denise. He wanted to use you, Ross. He wanted to use you, Chuck. He wants to use you. With your hands lifted. With your hands lifted. I want to pray for you. Look out among you, your text says, God. Someone with good reputation. Someone with full of the Holy Spirit. Someone with wisdom. God, your church needs not just unfailing love Christian church, but your church universally. And God, right now, God, I pray, I pray that you would call them forth in the name of Jesus. God, that they will be able to stand consistently, God, that the people may see a good reputation of them. God, that right now, God, you can fill them with your Holy Spirit. Come on, come to the altar. It's only for you. I want to touch you. God, fill them afresh with your Holy Spirit and wisdom. Yeah. In the name